68% of people using social media for their news. It is inferred that people will also use these sites to share other information, such as research findings in the area of psychology. I'm Lee Chantel and this video focuses on whether Twitter is an effective tool for communicating research findings in psychology. Twitter is a real-time microblogging site with 321 million monthly users and 500 million tweets sent each day. It is a predominantly mobile-based platform where 74% of users get their news. Unlike other social media sites that require reciprocal relationship, Twitter users, a lot of them have a one directional relationship where you can follow someone and read their tweets without them necessarily have to, having to follow you back. The top 10% of tweeters create 80% of the tweets which are then disseminated out to even more people. Facebook is a more sociable, interactive and entertaining site where messages of friends and family are more commonly shared and seen than serious news items. Twitter is utilised to keep up with news and for gathering information. And although Twitter has a limit with the characters that you can share, it's now 280, there was a study by Gleason that found that this actually helped with ease of posting and reposting and also with learning and understanding of societal issues. There was another study for Facebook that noted that the longer text on Facebook doesn't actually enhance acquisition of knowledge, but it helps people feel well informed. And this is reinforced by the amount of exposure to news on the platform. The most frequently retweeted messages are dominated by news information, which allows for passive learning on Twitter. And this is the absence of having any motivation to going out and acquiring learning. A study just this year by Bokes found that Twitter use is positively influencing knowledge acquisition with a negative effect for Facebook users. One of the essential roles for psychological scientists is to communicate their research. And this is not just with other experts, but for the general public as well. There's a variety of things that you can share on Twitter from being involved in live events and um, help seeking, sharing resources and supporting each other. Weinstein and Sumeraki did a study and found that the majority of academics who use Twitter use it passively. They read what other people share and um, they retweet rather than tweeting something for themselves. They also found in their study when they used Twitter and they were blogging that they had quite a few opportunities including being invited to conferences, collaborating with others and getting published. There were some other positive outcomes as well for, for Twitter users, including having higher citation counts in Google Scholar, giving and obtaining constructive criticism and to being able to reach more than just academics with your information. Learning on Twitter depends on the availability of information, exposure, motivation and the ability to understand. Twitter meets the conditions of an information sharing community. You can tweet, you can retweet, you can link to a blog or to other resources and you can engage with others who are also interested in psychological research. All these aspects are principles in enhancing learning on Twitter in the psychological field of research. Twitter amplifies communication. You can create, collaborate, negotiate and share knowledge and you can give better access of information to people. These are all necessary for effectively communicating research findings in psychology. But what do you think? Have you seen academics use Twitter? How do they use it? What do they share? And what benefits do you see in using Twitter? Here's some of my favorite people who I follow on Twitter to help with you. Thank you for your attention. Have a look at the links to see the slides on SlideShare and to read the article. And obviously you can follow me on Twitter. Thanks.